Music in America. America's musical traditions are extraordinarily rich and diverse owing to the country's multi-ethnic character. Our society includes Native Americans who arrived thousands of years ago, as well as Americans whose ancestors came from Europe, Africa, Latin America, or Asia over the last 400 years. Since the early 17th century, Americans have sung, played, and listened to psalms, hymns, popular songs, folk and patriotic tunes, dances, marches, and instrumental music. Colonial America Singing psalms was a central social activity in the Protestant churches in colonial America. The very first book printed in the English-speaking colonies was the Bay Psalm Book. It appeared in 1640, only 20 years after the Mayflower had brought the 102 pilgrims to Plymouth, Massachusetts. More than a century later came the first publication of original choral music by an American-born composer, the New England Psalm Singer, 1770, by Williams Billings. Music in 19th century America. The 19th century witnessed a population explosion in America from 5 million people in 1800 to more than 76 million in 1900, giving rise to an expansion and diversification of musical activities. Up to the early 20th century, bands were the favorite instrumental organization in America. By 1860, there were more than 3,000 bands, including 60,000 musicians. Virtually every village had its band and a bandstand. Bands performed at picnics, parades, political rallies, dances, and carnivals. The leading American composer and conductor of band music was John Philip Sousa. During the 19th century, symphony orchestras were founded in New York, Cincinnati, Boston, and Chicago. The Transcontinental Railroad facilitated concert tours by orchestras during the last three decades of the century. Between 1864 and 1888, the Theodore Thomas Orchestra, conducted by the German-born American Theodore Thomas, performed in several thousand concerts, including introducing many American audiences to symphonic music. Orchestral music was played not only in concert halls, but also in venues such as restaurants, dance halls, beer halls, and theaters. Orchestra and band concert programs often mixed classical music with popular dances, marches, and songs. In 19th century America, as in Europe, there was great demand for songs to be performed in private homes with pianos. The most popular songwriter of the mid-1800s was Stephen Foster, 1826 to 1864, whose works include well-known O oh Susanna, Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, and Beautiful Dreamer. Foster was the first American composer to earn a living from writing songs. However, he often earned little from publishing songs due to competing publishers who pirated his songs. Sadly, Foster died in poverty at the age of 37. Nationalism in America During the 1800s, nationalism began to influence American music. A leading American nationalist composer, Louis Morel Gottschalk, who was also a famous concert pianist, born in New Orleans, he went to Paris to study piano at 13. Three years later, in 1945, he gave a piano recital attended by Frederick Chopin, who predicted that he would become the king of pianists. Gottschalk captivated the European public with his piano pieces, including Bambula, an African-American dance, which drew upon African-American Cuban and Puerto Rican melodies and rhythms. In 1953, he returned to the United States, where he performed both in large cities and small towns. And we know that chess composer Antoine Dvorak spent three years in the, United, in the United States, strongly influenced by American nationalism. Considered to be the leading composer in the United States, he was the director of the National Conservatory in New York and was treated as a celebrity. Music in America after 1900. In the early 20th century, the United States became a prominent force in music as American jazz and popular music swept the world. 
During the first half of the 20th century, many composers sought to achieve an American sound. At the beginning of the century, Charles Ives, 1874 to 1954, used a variety of popular music in his works, including ragtime, barn dances, and revival hymns. During the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, American composers George Gershwin, William Grant Still, and Aaron Copland found inspiration in jazz, blues, spirituals, and cowboy songs. America's involvement in World War I, 1914 to 1918, and World War II, 1939 to 1945, gave rise to compositions evoking patriotic feelings. After April of 1917, when the United States entered the First World War, many composers wrote war songs that raised people's spirits, the most famous being George M. Cowan's Over There. America's entrance in the First World War even affected operatic repertoire. The Metropolitan Opera in New York did not perform German operas during its 1917-1918 season. After the United States entered World War II in December of 1941, many composers wrote works based on American history. Best known of such compositions is Aaron Copland's A Lincoln Portrait, written in 1942. In the 1950s, America's classical composers have influenced musicians worldwide. Techniques of producing electronic music, minimalist music styles of Philip Glass and John Adams, and the chance music of John Cage have had a major impact. Colleges and universities played an unusual vital role in our musical culture. Not only did they train and employ leading composers, performers, and scholars, they offer music appreciation courses that have expanded the horizons and interests of countless students. Since the 1950s, many universities and music schools have sponsored performing groups specializing in contemporary music that have housed most of the electronic music studios in the United States. In this way, American institutions of higher learning have become modern-day patrons of music, much as church and nobility were in earlier times.